good, good evening, good morning, good day, everyone. Welcome to this uh, Right Resignation panel. So um, I'm very, very happy to be moderating this panel today. Uh, we're going to be tackling the very important topic of the Great Resignation and how the global economy trend have led employees to, uh, to quit en masse across the industry, leaving a lot of open positions, but also unsatisfied employees. We will try to identify the reasons of that and see how companies can adjust in order to counter it. Today with me, I have the honor to be joined by four fantastic panelists. Uh, Cassie, if you can say a few words to introduce yourself, please. Hey, my name is Cassie O'Connor. I'm currently located uh, in the other Vancouver, Vancouver, Washington, and I am at Glue EA, and I've been there for 13 years now, and I'm also on the XDS committee. Thank you. Kay, please. Hello, everybody. I'm Kay Arjunian. I'm one of the original founders of Counterpunch Studios, and as of 2020, we're glad to be Counterpunch, a virtuous studio. I'm currently acting as the general manager here at Counterpunch Virtuous Studio. Erica, please. Hi everyone, I'm Erica from Manifesto Games. We are an outsourcing studio based in Brazil. So I'm talking from Recife, Brazil. And I've been in the company for almost 10 years now and I work as a international business developer. And Phil, please. Hey, everybody. I'm Phil Knowles, and I'm at Amazon Games. I've been here for a couple of years now. Um, I work in the publishing group and, and work with uh, a bunch of our teams, uh, helping them set up their outsourcing efforts. I'm a, a senior outsource program manager, uh, and happy to be here. Thank you very much, everyone. So jumping right into the topic, um, I'd like to start by asking you guys if 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 you have witnessed at your company uh, any 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 issue with related to the great resignation, and if you have noticed more departures than usual, and most importantly, why were there any common reasons given by uh, your employees as they left the company? Uh, and to answer that, if Kay would do us the honor to start, please. Sure. I actually attended a panel at DICE, uh, as I mentioned before, and um, we discussed this and uh, called it more of a great reshuffle in the video game industry because we're not seeing artists and other members of the industry leave the industry per se, but we are seeing them move around at quite a rapid pace compared to before. And I think a reason for that is not being tied geographically to where you have to work would be a key reason. So artists and other personnel are able to work for companies that they don't live close to um, at a, a comfortable possibility now with the ability to work remotely and also rate. There is an inflation for um, artists specifically and there seems to be a lot of moving around for rate. Great, thank you. Erica? Uh, is it is it similar on your um, side, or have you noticed different a different pattern? Uh, no, I think our view is pretty similar to Kay. Like as far as we know, the people that left our studio during those times are still in the game industry. We just feel like because there was a lot of free time with the quarantine and being home a lot of time, it gave time to people to rethink or think well their careers. And most people just wanted to work in different projects or in some cases, different platforms. And they tried to relocate themselves aligned with these um, wishes, but, but not necessarily because they wanted to leave the game industry. I see. Thank you. And do you, with, with this trend of people leaving a lot, um, have you had to adjust your current benefits in order to retain talents? Uh, have the, um, the reasons of staying of current 
employees have changed? Has it changed over the years? Is it remaining the same? Have you adapted the way you you compensate people, not necessarily in terms of cash only, but work-life balance or other benefits? Um, and if yes, if you have changed that, what do you believe has been proven the most effective? Uh, Cassie, please. Sure. Yeah, I think we are seeing a lot of changes. Um, we also were acquired during all of this as well. So we're balancing kind of two different things. Uh, I think, and it's like, like you said, it's more than just cash, but I know on the glue side, like we have um, established a hybrid model for work from home. So we're able to like manage your discretion, like most things, uh, decide if we want to be working from home, if we need to go in the office, you know, we have that flexibility because I think um, pre-pandemic, uh, I was one of like five people that was fully remote. Uh, so it is um, really great to see that uh, our company has embraced that we can have this hybrid model of choosing to work from home. Uh, like Kay and Erica said, I think people realize the importance of the balance, um, especially for those who have to do a commute, um, saving those hours each day. We've also uh, made sure that we're providing like more uh, mental health awareness, like um, sessions, counseling, things like that. Um, Cause yeah. obviously it's, a lot of things are taking toll besides just our jobs right now. Uh, so I think there's been a huge emphasis on that. And then also to making sure we still have like team building um, where they're like remote events, uh, just different things you can sign up for like remote cooking classes, you know, anything like that, that you can still like see your team space, you know, wherever you are, uh, we're putting a lot of um, emphasis and focus on still like trying to maintain that team building uh, throughout it. Excellent. Phil, do you have a, a different approach on this uh, from what you're doing at Amazon? Uh, it's, it's a lot of the same things, a lot of, you know, as, as teams sort of are able to come back together, we are doing a lot of uh, targeted on-site um, uh, uh, meetings and sessions, you know, week-long sessions uh, as sort of a way to, to start bringing people uh, back into, you know, what will eventually be a hybrid model. Amazon allows the, the team leads, you know, product leads to determine, you know, what the timeline is for that and what it's going to look like. So um, people are still sorting that out. But, you know, Amazon did, uh, you know, pretty widely publicized uh, increase to their salary cap. And that's an absolute, you know, reaction to the rising costs of, of talent, uh, you know, that it's harder to retain talent, that there's more competition for talent. So uh, that was very, um, you know, dramatic uh, increase. And it's, it's directly related to trying to retain talent and, and get the best talent in. Um, and then we are, uh, you know, the other thing with uh, Amazon is because we have offices all over the world, we, or it's a little easier for us to have employees all over the world because they can be uh, under a particular office and still be um, working remotely for a team on the West Coast or, or, or something like that. So we got a few kind of unique things that we do as this multinational corporation. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm going to... Uh rebound on that and uh, because both of you have been mentioning the, the hybrid model being adopted throughout your studio so I want to sort of open this question to all of the panelists and, and, and the two of you obviously as well. Do you foresee that as being a permanent move or do you think it's going to slowly come back to what used to be the norm like in office or hybrid is going to be the new normal or fully remote is becoming an option that will become permanent. I, I've been hearing a lot of different perspectives from different, different studios. Some studios have taken the, the approach of, no, the, the pandemic has demonstrated we've been operating very well in a remote setup. So we are gonna just shut down our, our office or shrink it down by a tenth of, this, of the space it used to be. And everybody's gonna move on, on a remote working from now on while other studios have taken the opposite direction and saying, no, it, it hasn't been 
creatively speaking, it's being damaging for the product we've been creating. We want to create interaction back at the office as much as we can, or we want more human interaction, face-to-face -face interaction. So we will enforce having uh, our, our teams back in, in a physical presence. How is it for you guys? Well, how do you foresee that going? If I may start, I think that for us, and for many people, a hybrid work from home is permanent. The pandemic has really affected different people in different ways. And so we have part of our team who can't wait to get back into the office and have that human connection. And then part of our team have decided that, you know, this Los Angeles mass population lifestyle isn't for them. And they've moved on to places where they're, you know, more fulfilled, uh, living a quieter lifestyle. So because everyone is different and that doesn't differentiate how important they are to the company. I feel that we need to be more flexible and to create a work-life balance by allowing people to do what makes them truly happy and what fulfills their, their, their personal life so that they can put in a good effort in the office. I don't think we can ever completely get rid of the office because especially for new hires and junior artists, it is difficult um, to never have an, a face-to-face -face interaction, to have to get on a Zoom call every time you need support. So we are seeing that the younger, newer out of school artists are really craving that experience in the office. And for example, with our leads, the ones that are still in LA, we're alternating where they come in once a week, once a month to have that interaction, but getting to stay home and have their lives. Thank you. Anyone else want to share what, what their plan is for, for, their, uh, for their company? Yeah, sure. Um, for us, we, don't, we still don't have any plans to go back to the office. Um, and, and I think that, like I said, we need to consider what the employees want. And we will also talk in this panel about uh, retaining the talent. So, making uh, what they want is, is really important to, to keep them in the company. Um, our team is pretty adju adjusted to, to the dynamic of working remotely. But what I think it might come to, to a point um, talking, addressing this, uh, this question of training very young artists or engineers. Um, one solution that we've been doing is creating test projects like small projects so when they get into the, the company they start doing this test project and they're already immersed in a in a project that's kind of uh, preparing them to work with the other teams and the bigger teams so kind of making a framework for them to adjust in this reality of no physical meetings and no no physical chatting and they you know, coffee break in, in, the, in the break room or something like that. So it, it's also important for the companies to pre prepare those people to getting the team and getting familiar with everyone in, in this reality. Thank you. Uh, for, for you, Cassie, have you, uh, you've been used to work from home and to work remotely at least uh, since uh, a long time. And do you, you think that will be applied to a global to a, to a larger scale at Blue now? I believe so. Yes, like I said, I've been remote for six years now, six seven years. Um, so I believe so. I think, like everyone else said, I think we realize the value of that work life balance, especially in our industry. And we have been able to ship titles being fully remote. And I think it all depends on the team as well. Like my team, we support every glue title. Uh, so we're used to working in different time zones, uh, different hours. So for us working from home is like ideal because we can kind of have more flexibility in our schedule and not be you know, stuck on a bus or something if we need to submit a game. Uh, I think for the creative teams, I think some of them are itching to get back in the office because like you said, once they all get together, they can collaborate and feed off each other. But overall, um, this is, I think the hybrid model will definitely be a permanent part of Glue. And I mean, we've talked about like, you know, do we keep both floors of our offices? Do we just go to one floor? Like we want to keep our location 
but there's just a lot of discussions happening now, like actually how much space do we really need? Do people really need permanent desks? Things like that. So I think there's still a lot to, to be discussed to see what it's gonna look like in the future, but hybrid model is definitely a permanent part of that. And I see, I have seen like more and more people, like you said, like having the option of being fully remote and maybe moving elsewhere. And it's great to see companies kind of um, embrace that. Thank you. Um, a, a lot of the people we, we, we've been talking to are saying that um, over the last few years, a couple of years essentially, it has become increasingly difficult to find talents and convince them to join, to join your, your uh, our team. Uh, have you had to adjust the way you approach recruitment altogether? Uh, have you changed the way you're looking for talents? Uh, I'm, I'm guessing having the possibility to work remotely would potentially open a whole new pool of talent that you would not necessarily consider before. Uh, but how, how is that, how is the recruiting going right now? Um, Kay, you want to take this one? Sure. Um, recruiting has been very difficult. I won't lie about that. Um, <clears throat> there seems to be quite a competition, especially in North America for talent. And yes, um, work from home has opened up the possibility to extend our reach. However, um, there is still restraints with speed, even with um, cloud-based solutions and things that are kind of trying to catch up to this fast-paced need for better connectivity. Uh, we are still limited and we, you know, all of our clients are not quite ready yet to jump on the cloud. So there is a limit still to where geographically people can be. They just don't have to be in the office. Um, so it has made it quite difficult for us to recruit. We've opened up the recruiting channels more broadly and we've found that um, our best uh, options right now have been referral-based. So keeping our team super happy so they can refer their friends and, and, and uh, people in their network. Um, for example, uh, with our team, we have gotten more bites from uh, postings from our leads and artists than we have from our own postings. So we've really tapped into that. Um, also, we've started partnering with universities to bring in new talent uh, because there's quite a saturation of existing talent. Great, thank you. How, how is the situation in Brazil for you, Erica? Oh, uh, well. We need to, to keep in mind that in Brazil, we, we always heard once in a while, you know, someone that went to live abroad that is now working at some international company somewhere else. And, but, but before the pandemic, it was hard for the companies to consider remote work and to trust, especially for engineering. So it, it was kind of easy to get our talents here. But now everyone is already familiar with remote working. So there's a lot of hiring from international companies in, in Brazil, like in other countries as well, of course. And so it's even harder for us to, to keep those talents. Um, Manifesto has always kind of been in our DNA to try to hire uh, young, uh, uh, young professionals instead of very experienced ones. And we try to um, teach them, you know, and evolve the professional. And as they learn, um, they grow with the company. And, but now it's been uh, like our priority, our number one thing. And we, we also get closer to the universities, like Kay was saying, and we, we made some I'm not sure how to say it in English, but it's like a capacitation program with the universities. So they kind of have an internship at Manifesto while they're studying um, game development in the university. And this program also, it's easier for us to, you know, take a closer look at the students and, and invite the, the best students to, to join the company. So it's good for the university because they have a practical training. So they like, they have this vision of the market in the classes, in the program, but also good for us because we can get closer to the students and and invite the brightest ones to, to join the studio. So that's uh, how we're trying to, to attract talents now. 
Thank you. When when you when you write Amazon on a, on a, on a job description, does it make things easier for you, Phil, to to hire talents? Uh, um, that's an interesting question. I uh, that I don't know. Probably in some ways yes, in some ways no. I mean, Amazon doesn't have the reputation necessarily of, of throwing out crazy salary, but you know, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with, with Kay, our, our biggest um, success rates are through referrals um, instead of just going out there, especially uh, at the higher level and for the higher, uh, you know, um, uh, the, the leads and things like that. And then um, we, uh, we see that there is just, there's sort of less, um, less uh, applications coming in. We're, there seems, we're seeing a little bit of sort of a dearth of talent for, for young people. And maybe it's just because there's more competition, but we're just not seeing as many uh, applications as we used to, uh, which is a little bit interesting. And I don't know if it's because there's been a bunch of movement and, um, and people are settled into what they've taken, but uh, we, we're more successful when we sort of go out there and contact people through, uh, you know, and be fairly, um, uh, you know, proactive uh, in reaching out and not just waiting for things to come in. Um, and, and I find that interesting, um, but not exactly sure why that is. It, it just it doesn't even seem like there's quite as many people coming out of maybe they're getting out of the educational systems maybe they're getting hired up before they go out into the marketplace um but we're seeing lots of that thanks phil so <clears throat> one of the main reasons that has been proposed uh as uh, of the reason of, the, of people quitting their, their job was not so much about the money itself but it was a lot of people were uh, taking this occasion to 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 escape toxic toxic environment, uh, bad company culture, uh, bad teams relationship, uh, to have a, a better a better work environment altogether. But with the uh, meanwhile, the, the hybrid model or the full remote model has created a lot of difficulties for companies to even maintain a company culture altogether. So how do you, how do you, how do, you do uh, uh, with, with your teams? How do you maintain a healthy and engaging company culture when you are not able to see people, to meet people, uh, when you are not even sometimes working in the same city or the same country? Uh, Cassie, who has loads of experience in managing teams remotely, what, what's your secret sauce into keeping people happy uh, and, and connected together? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is communication and understanding, uh, especially now. Like uh, things happen um, beyond our control, and understanding that you may not have. Mm -hmm as much involvement from your team as you did before. And that can, that's okay. As long as, you know, you guys are still producing good work and you're communicating clearly, um, you don't need to have a stand up every single morning at 10 a.m., you know, like you did in the studio. Um, for our teams ourselves, like we do once a week and then I have other ones that are bi-weekly. Uh, we have the flexibility to choose, you know, kind of when, what makes it more, much, much more beneficial to the team on how often we meet. Cause we all know what Zoom fatigue is. And I think that plays a role in that. So I think it's just like understanding your team's needs, especially like, especially the working moms um, that have to like have kids at home you know, teaching them and all of that kind of stuff, like having that kind of flexibility, I think is huge. So I think it's more seeing your employee as a person rather than just your coworker and adding different of like things that you can be flexible with, like meeting times and deadlines and things like that as a whole is really important. And then I said, like um, having those team building things, like even though you can't be in person, like, you know, have like a cocktail mixing class, like once a month or an art class or just something people can still sign up for and, you know, feel like they're still involved and just clearly communicating where that's like fuck every day, like just checking in, seeing how people are doing. Um, 
things like that. So I would say, yeah, definitely like face to face with the Zoom as needed, you know, no, don't get Zoom fatigue, you know, using like other forms of communication like Slack or email instead of having a meeting and, you know, just being flexible with um, everyone's lives outside of work. I think that can help retention and keep people happy. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Cassie. Uh, uh, Erica, you mentioned you were working a lot with universities and schools, so you're supposedly getting a lot of junior talents uh, at, at Manifesto. So how do you how do you make them feel part of a a company when when you know the company itself is sort of all over the place? Yeah. It's challenging, and, and I must say that our HR department um, is one is one of the departments that get got more mature during the pandemic. There was a lot of things that were done, but not in a very processual way. So now we have a lot of documentation and processes and steps that we need to follow. Um, so first thing is that we prefer to hire someone that's younger and less experienced, but that we believe fits our culture instead of hiring someone more experienced, but that we're not sure it would fit our culture. So that's one thing. And then uh, things like Cassie said, like we try to incentivize using cameras during meetings. We hired a platform, an on online platform that allows people to share how they're feeling today. And sometimes the HR person gets direct uh, conversations with the person to talk about personal stuff, like not, not related to work, but that might be um, influencing their, um, their performance. And then uh, we also try to be very flexible about if they have something to work out at home and they need time. Um, we, we'd be more flexible also with the, like the daily meetings and, and etc. And and like I was I was mentioning before, like the onboarding process, uh, we also worked a lot on this and and we have activities that incentivize the, the new ones to interact with the fat ones. Like um, there are some onboarding steps that ask you to talk to someone you haven't talked yet, um, ask how they tried the company, how long, like try to um, be curious about your, your coworkers. So that's another thing among many others we're trying to do, but yeah, like, the ultimate goal is, is make everyone know each other, even if they haven't met in person. And because that way we'll be more sensitive and more empathic with the, our co-workers, right? Thank you. Um, so according to the excellent XDS Inside report that everybody has seen and the great presentation from Ryan right before that, 43% uh, of participants have stated that they have not been benefiting from a greater talent pool to hire from, while 42% say they don't know, and only 15% say it has a positive impact on recruitment. Meanwhile, people are still leaving. A lot of people are leaving. So if they are leaving from one place, they must be going to another place, but yet nobody seems to be benefiting from that. So. Where do you think these people go, Phil? Oh, that's funny. I think, that, I, I mean, I think they, it's interesting that we've, we have seen some of, especially at the kind of lead uh, in, in leadership level, some sort of pauses in the, uh, in work where people are either, they may be going to take an opportunity to go to a startup, they may be taking an opportunity to take a little sabbatical. Uh, there, so I think there is some of that. I think those intentions are still to be in game development. Um, but uh, people, I think there's a fair amount of freelancing going on as well, where they're not necessarily going to another company and they're, they're opening themselves up to doing consulting or freelancing or, uh, or that kind of thing. And, um, and then I do think there's a little bit uh, of... Um, more acceptance for people to go work for service providers um, instead of uh, developer publishers. 
so we might be seeing a little bit of a talent drain to to go uh you know we see it for things like tech art where where it's getting harder it's always been hard to hire tech artists but it's getting harder uh and uh, i'm seeing more tech art capabilities at the vendors so there just might be that shift where it's not necessarily competition with the other devs and publishers but uh a little bit of competition with the service providers as well um because maybe they're a little more open to being flexible with either schedule or, or location. Thanks. You, Kay, you were mentioning the, the great reshuffle. So that's, that's probably connected to that. Uh, uh, can, you, can you share a little bit more about your insight on this, please? Yes, absolutely. I feel that maybe companies are not seeing the aggregate increase because as people are joining certain companies, others are leaving. There is a reshuffling happening. Um, for us, Something that we offer that is important to our artists is being able to work on, for example, three AAA titles a year versus working on the same one for two years or three years. So the diversity in projects has been something that we've been using to, to gain artists our way. Uh, however, we are seeing some artists leave because for example, you know, they always wanted to work on a specific game company. Uh, previously it was harder to get in and now it's easier because those companies are seeing opportunities open up. Uh, so I am seeing most of our, our team who is leaving go to like the game company of their dreams that was not accessible to them before because of location or because it's currently easier um, to get a position there. And then we're seeing artists who come to us from said game company uh, because they're either you know tired of working on the same game for two years or want a little bit of a like a freer, more freelance like but organized company culture. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, before we start taking some uh, some Q and A question, uh, I, I'd like to go back a little bit on. Um, making sure people stay so that we don't have to recruit more people. So retaining talent is step one in, do, in, in this process. And one of the reasons that has been, um, uh, another reason that has been uh, given is, I, I, I don't get to do what I like. Uh, I've become unhappy in my job. And with, with the remote working, some some people have felt more difficult to maintain the connection between employees and their management management management, uh, whether that being their direct manager or more importantly, the senior leadership of what used to be a studio, which is completely dematerialized. So, how do you keep the connection between the different um, the different layer of the organization to make sure that problems are heard? and solved, uh, how do you make it so that uh, the communication doesn't break? Uh, I, I'm going to open it to any, anyone who wants to, to tackle this one. I think on our side, what we're seeing is that we're having a lot more like all hands meetings um, from different people in the company, especially like, um, you know, like the vice presidents or senior vice presidents, et cetera, uh, and that they're trying to be more open about uh, what's going on. I think that's part of it is, um, I think as like, we are, we were a small studio uh, and then all of a sudden we became part of a very, very large uh, company. So we kind of got lost in the weeds a little bit, but I'm seeing a more effort on um, senior level people um, having all hands and then like opening it up, like same thing, like submitting questions and things like that. And just being honest about things, like just answering questions, not avoiding questions, even if they're hard. So I think that's been a positive that we're seeing is that uh, like the senior level is trying to make more of an effort to reach down to everyone else um, on the dev teams. Thank you. Yeah, Luke. We're, we're seeing that as well, like, like a lot more all hands, different types of presentations, um, leadership presentations, um, uh, open office hours and things for people to be able to ask questions. Um, and uh, it's, it's also been interesting to see the, the, the production value go up. Uh, the, for us, there's a, you know, we've dedicated people to like, hey, we need to make these things a little more entertaining uh, and engaging for the team members so that, you know, maybe that does give them a little better 
sort of uh, team culture or team, uh, something they can emotionally kind of grab onto um, why they're part of this team. So the production value of those things is actually uh, skyrocketed and now they're, they're sort of must see for, for a lot of, of people uh, in our org. I can chime in to say that definitely listening more to the talent. Um, we started doing something called a dream projects list. And like Cassie, we were a very small team, very kind of family-like small team. And we grew quite a bit and also joined a very, very large company with teams all over the world. So really keeping a balance with keeping my team connected to the other teams, but not burning them out with Zoom meetings all the time and really focusing on their work-life balance and reducing OT by starting to work with some of our sister studios now to share the workload so that they feel that they're being supported by the other studios and by our company and also that they have an input. And from 2020, when we joined Virtuous to now, we've actually gone and uh, won some of these dream list projects that our team wanted to work on. So they're seeing in real life um, their voices be heard. And I think that's important. That's awesome. That's great. Great story. Thank you. Um, Erica, anything to add? Yeah, I think that obviously um, communication it might be easier for us because we are the smallest company between my colleagues here. Um, but we, we try to focus on, on the well, we try to focus on the person's interest versus the company's interest. Uh, we need to make this very clear. So I, I believe that before the pandemic, we already did like uh, meetings with the whole company to explain the strategy, but it was like every three months. And now it's like twice a month. So every 15 days, we have a meeting with everyone online. Everyone is welcome to join. And we're so we keep saying to the people what we're doing, um, where we're going, what we'd like to do. And of course the meetings get shorter because we're always talking about this. So it's not like a two hour meeting every 15, every 15 days. So, um, and this way we're always telling our employees where we're going, what we're doing, what we'd like to do. And they can always keep uh, comparing these to their wishes. Um, do I want to work with this kind of projects? Do I want to keep working in, in this direction that the company is going? So that saves us a lot of time in terms of people leaving because they didn't know that they could change projects or because they didn't know they would end up working in this kind of platform or things like that. And, and also the, the platform that I mentioned before that we're using, um, it's gamified it. So you get little coins every time you write a feedback for your coworker. So it's very well structured for us and, and easy for us now to share feedbacks, to receive feedbacks as well. And, and to structure a personal development plan uh, within the company and, and like where I'd like to be in the next one, two, three years. Okay. Thanks for the opportunity, yeah. for the invitation. Yeah. It was a pleasure to Thank share you with very you guys. Much. Yes. Good stuff. It was Thank great you. to be here with everyone. Thank you so much. And fingers crossed, we'll see you guys in uh, Vancouver in September. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You bet. <laughs> Thank you. Take care, everyone. Have a good one. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye.